You are listening to Supplement Source, the official podcast of the Council for Responsible Nutrition. And now, your host, Jeff Ventura. Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the Supplement Source. My name is Jeff Ventura, the Vice President of Communications at CRN, and it is my uh, sincere uh, honor and pleasure to be joined today by Tanisha Rudier, Regulatory Compliance and Advertising Counsel at Zymogen, who was one of our runner-ups at uh, our CRN uh, Convergence 24 conference in the Trailblazing Women Awards category. And one of the things, uh, Tanisha, well, first of all, Tanisha, Geez, thank you so much for dialing in today. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time out. No, thank you. This is an amazing opportunity, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Yeah, and 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 let's let's just dive right in. I think one of the things that gets missed all the time in these sorts of programs, you know, you 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 have that moment at a conference, and someone gets honored, uh, and there are you know other people on the list, um, but you don't necessarily get into the details of of each individual person. And I think when you're talking about women uh, in the industry, um, some of those stories are impactful and kind of deeply personal. So I wondered if maybe you could share a little bit about uh, your journey in the industry and sort of how it started and, and just give us a little background. Yeah, so I've been in the supplement industry specifically for about 13 and a half, almost 14 years now. Um, And so I'm classically trained as an attorney and have worked in compliance my entire 15-year career. Um, You know, I always kind of make a joke about oftentimes most people, when they get into compliance, you either uh, walk, stumble, or fall into it. And, um, you know, as I was kind of looking for the right place to land after law school, compliance really piqued my interest, but it wasn't until I really got into the supplement space that I appreciated the opportunity that I could do good while also doing well mm. by helping people to get achieve their best health. And, um, you know, one thing that I always use kind of as my guiding motto when um, working with staff and helping them to kind of understand some of the compliance measures and why does this all matter? I use what I call the golden girl standard. Mm-hmm. And I say, just think about that, what we're making, not only is going in someone's body, but it could be fed to your grandma. Sure. And so it's something that's really important that you want to make sure that everything that you're doing, that you're following the process is set in place and that you're putting the due care in to make sure that our consumers who are like our family are going to be um, able to get a product that is safe and that is effective for their own personal health needs. Yeah, so, I mean, you really are kind of coming, I mean, since the beginning, you've kind of come at it from uh, sort of a deep conviction about, um, you know, just how important this work really is. I mean, we, we don't think about it. I mean, you know, you get up in the morning and you just pop a, you know, a supplement into your mouth and, and, you know, I mean, and that's how it should be, I think, right? I mean, it should be the trust that a consumer has in us uh, should be at that level. And yet um, a lot goes into, you know, goes into that story as, as you're mentioning. Um, has it been hard, do you think, um, being a woman in this particular industry, do you think it's different from any other industry uh, in, in, to blaze that trail, if you will? I think sometimes it's difficult to get started mm-hmm. um, because oftentimes, you know, generally where you're going to be working, of course, is in like a corporate environment. And oftentimes it's kind, it can be somewhat of a boys club. Now, sometimes it's by design and sometimes it's, just by function. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I've always found that kind of, you know, putting my nose down and getting to the work and ensuring that there's some substance that kind of allows me to have that foundation to be able to have some level of um, mobility within my career. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that, you know, one of the things that I've been personally committed to is doing what I like to call lifting while I climb Mm. and making kind of room for 
um, women and others who don't wouldn't necessarily get the opportunity, not because they're not qualified, but because they're not necessarily in the room when the choices are being made. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. And do, have you um, have you always felt uh, a supportive network of women uh, in your career, um, or or has that been? something that you also, I mean, it didn't come, I guess what I'm, my question is, did it, did it come naturally? Were you just naturally surrounded by supportive women or, or was that, is that something like your advice to someone just entering uh, their career that they have to work at it? Uh, I honestly, my, the beginning of my career, um, it was, I was usually the only woman and actually usually the only person of color as well. Mm. Um, and, you know, I guess in my childhood, that was kind of the environment that I was in most of the time. So I wasn't as uncomfortable. I understood that what made me uh, different allowed me to bring something more to mm-hmm. the table mm-hmm. um, and support having a well-rounded perspective. Um, I think there are certainly some amazing women that are in our industry, but sometimes it's hard to find because we're sort of spread out. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really important to kind of, you know, join trade organizations like CRN and and be able to connect with peers who are like minded to be able to get to where it is that you're trying to go. Yeah. How do they help? Uh, How do you know, how do the peers and sort of the, the network uh, help and particularly um, I mean, does something, does an example come to mind of, you know, where, uh, that network of that female network, uh, came, came in, in a, in a supportive way, uh, to, to borrow your language, to get you to where you wanted to go. Um, yeah. So it helps you to feel less alone. Mm-hmm. Um, because oftentimes people can't understand, you know, of course, of course, there's sometimes microaggressions and things like that. Um, And sometimes things that when you're kind of in a more uh, male dominated area, that will happen that only you will notice and you think you're kind of going crazy a little bit. But when you're (laughs) able to connect with other women who have dealt with the same thing, some of which have been able to actually clear that hurdle, Mm -hmm. you're able to communicate with them and say, okay, this is what happened and this is what I'm thinking and this is what I'm trying to do. And so it, it's, I've found the women that I've connected with have been more than open and inviting to me um, to be able to answer any questions that I might have, help make connections. And, you know, I just seek to try to at least be at least half of the help that I've been able to receive. Mm-hmm. When you heard about this runner up, sort of status on this, you know, being nominated. Um, what was your initial reaction? Were you like, it's about time or, or, or were you, <laughs> or, or were you like, uh, wait a minute, like, have I really blazed a trail? It's more like a footpath that I found in the wilderness or like, I mean, what, what, what was your reaction? Uh, I mean, honestly, I was a little surprised um, because looking at the caliber of some of the other women in, um, that were all of the other women that were nominated. I'm like, do I sit here? And I guess there's a little bit of that, like imposter syndrome, uh-huh. um, that kind of creeps in there a bit. Um, I was really excited to be able to be in a group of people who I humbly respect. Mm-hmm. And while I initially was kind of like, what, are you sure? Maybe there's another Tanisha that you're talking about. But <laughs> then it gave me the opportunity to kind of reflect and say, okay, you know, I guess I can maybe see where someone might uh, think that, Mm -hmm. Um, which is really exciting for me that my just doing what comes naturally Mm -hmm. and doing what I love is being able to kind of create opportunity and um, bring attention to the industry as well as the amazing women that are part of it. Well, and it's, it's also that, you know, we're so in our heads sometimes that we don't, we, we don't actually, you know, we don't have the same external perception of ourselves that other people have. And then right. uh, I, I see what you're saying. It's that sort of like, oh, wait, I mean, I've just been kind of doing my job, you know, doing my thing. Yeah. <laughs> and like, but someone has noticed that, you know, I'm kind of 
standing out from the crowd for whatever it is. My, what do you think it is? I mean, is it your leadership style? Is it your your risk taking? Your initiative? Your, I mean, if you you know if you were if we were to ask three of your friends, what do you think they'd say, or three of your professional colleagues? Um, I I think that they would say that I have kind of this unapologetic, um, almost audacity uh-huh. to try. It's a good word. Something new. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and then I'm I'm much more open and inviting to um, working with the other stakeholders and to get to maintaining the core of what matters and what's important. Right. But being open to trying new things and taking some level of risk by still maintaining, you know, that semblance of compliance and what are your core values. Well, and so important in this industry in particular is that sort of, and I think you learn this, right, over your, you know, the longer you're kind of a a working grown up, you know, know, the, (laughs) the, 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 the more you kind of learn you know, that one of the biggest skills is to be, you know, adaptive, right? And uh, it sounds like that's what you're talking about. And this, and it's funny, it sounds to me like you're, you may be an expert in compliance issues in terms of legality, but, but then there's the part of you that isn't complying, right? I mean, it sounds like there's a part of you that's creative and, and you really use that to your advantage. Am I wrong? Uh, you know, it's interesting because um, <laughs> I lately I've been getting a lot of people that are like, oh, yeah, you're a creative. And I'm like, who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. But, you know, I guess when you couch it in that in that language, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I do because I want to make sure that the process is as collaborative as possible. Mm-hmm. And while it's easy as a compliance leader to say it's this way or no way, mm-hmm. um, that doesn't, you know, you, you have to work with everyone and it needs to work for everyone in some form or fashion. Yeah, there's some hard truths of things that you may not like, but you have to do. But if I'm able to find a way to, you know, meet in the middle where the middle is possible, why not? Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about, um, let's just get a little personal for a minute. Not, you know, deeply personal, but let's, let's, talk, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about where are you from? I, I don't even know. Uh, I grew up in Northern Virginia in okay. a town called Springfield, Virginia. Oh well, I I live in Delray, Virginia. So in Alexandria, oh, yeah. So I neighbor. I, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and uh, where are you now? Are you still there, or did you did you move away? Or no. So I live in Orlando, Florida now. Oh, okay, all right. And um, were you were you impacted at all by the storms? We were, yes, um, a little bit. Not as much as some of the other areas. We lost a little power. Mm-hmm. Um, had a little bit of water intrusion, but Ugh. we're blessed to generally be okay, though. Generally be okay. That's good. That's good. And so what brought you down to Florida, the uh, the job market, the industry? Uh, school. So I moved to Florida to attend law school at Florida A&M University College of Law. Okay. And, um, you know, I did kind of the uh, grown-up combo at that point, graduated law school, got married, had the kid. and. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes by <laughs> fast, doesn't it? It's crazy. Yeah, it I does. <laughs> I meet I meet people now my age, and they're like, "Yeah, my, you know, my thirty year old son, or you know, whatever." I'm like, yeah. I'm like, wait, what? Like, how can can are I actually have a thirty year old son? That's crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's great. Um, and so, what's next for you? Um, what you know what. What, what kind of, uh, you, you know, you come off of a conference like that or, you know, you, um, you, know, you, you look at the, our industry, which is really so vibrant and, and changing all the time. And, you know, there's just so much going on. Um, what, what are your sort of, when you look ahead, what, what things kind of, you know, pique your interest or get you excited um, you know, I, I really, really love working in compliance. Um, and so for me, I, I think it's about, I'm at a point in my career where I'm able to be a little more, you know, just selective as to where I work and who I work with and what projects that I work on. Isn't that great? Um, and so just continuing to be able to align myself with those projects and companies who are aligned with my core values and continuing to you know, do well while I'm doing good. 
What do you, final question, what do you say to a woman who is just starting out in her career and she has not blazed her own trail yet? What's your advice for her? That it's hers to blaze, that um, it's no one else's Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that it's just waiting for her to kind of start on the journey. Don't be afraid. Um, No idea is too big that you should just go for it and reach out along the way because there are people who are just waiting for you to come and um, ask for advice so that they can pour into you the way that they were poured into. Tanisha Rudier, thank you so much for taking the time out today. We really appreciate having you on Supplement Source. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Take care.